Hello guys, Gregson Reviews here. Uh, a few people have asked me how I get my uh, overlay on my videos when I do uh, game reviews, hardware reviews, etc. And I demonstrate a game and there's a nice little display out of what's happening via the GBU and things like that. So uh, I'm going to give a quick demonstration here. Right, so first thing you need is MSI Afterburner. I've got the latest uh, beta version 4.3.0, which is beta 4. There's a bit of a nuisance thing which can't be stopped, we can't stop it. It's, uh, every time I start MSI Afterburner you get Reva Tuna can't c c make a connection or something like that which is quite annoying but it doesn't uh, stop anything working so ignore that when it comes up just click OK. Everyone's gonna been getting that so pretty annoying but anyway let's get on and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So if we fire up Tomb Raider you can see how I've got my overlay set and I shall give you a a quick talk on how you can do the same. Right, so as you can see we've got D3D11 which is DX11 as known as DX11 as well showing the frames. And then you've got the frame times which is uh, quite interesting to have as sometimes if you're running a bit laggy you'll see it popping up to like anything above 50 ms minutes of a second is uh, too high and can cause problems. 30 is the, the highest you really want to go but by the by, this uh, talk about how we get the display. Then I've got my GPU clock, GPU use, GPU temp, fans, memory clock, and memory use. That's all I really want to know about how my GPU is uh, working and make sure everything's running fine. So uh, that's all you need to do. So to get there, let's quit this and we'll show you. So first thing, click on your settings monitoring and as you can see I've got a uh, frame rate in on screen display and on LCD because I've got a G19 keyboard which comes with a nice little uh, LCD screen uh, for things like DX12 it's real handy because I can see on my screen what's happening so uh, whereas DX12 doesn't allow Afterburner to show or not in all the games show what's happening so that's quite handy for me to see there so anyway Frame rate, you can't change frame rate, you know, it's, uh, frame rate is what it's called and that's always going to be frame rate and that shows us DX11, OpenGL, DX12 if you get to see it, that sort of thing, DX9, 10, blah de blah. Right, then we've got your call clock in on screen display LCD and uh, to get them to show you just click the tick box, show in on screen display and as you can see I want it on different lines so I rename everything so override graph name GPU clock and uh, core clock so nothing's the same here so that's what I do and you've got GPU usage so obviously I want a new line so it's usage and I'll put GPU use self-explanatory again always tick these boxes override graph name temp and uh, GPU temp makes it nice and simple fan speed, fans, blah de blah, etc etc so that's how I do that but what happens is it's all purple it's all a bit small and you know because I'm running 1440p people can't read that so how do I change that I hear you ask okay so let's go into Reva Tuna statistics and as you can see we've got uh, lots of different options here for all your palette and everything else now you've got vector 2D Vector 3D and Raster 3D. Now because my GPU is quite powerful I've got Raster 3D on. Viewpoint or Frame Buffer doesn't really matter it's fine. I put Frame Buffer on. On screen display shadow yes please because the colour I'm using uh, it can blend in with something else and then you won't be able to read it so it's nice to have a shadow around. So we put shadow on then you can change the colour of your on, on screen display which is uh, you just move about obviously so if you want a nice different colour uh, let's say you wanted uh, you're an Nvidia fan and you want a nice green let's uh, pick something nice green there there we go click OK and uh, that's all you really need to do oh and you can change the size of it of course it's from small to huge but we'll just have something like that, that will do nicely tick that off close after burner
Reopen afterburner. Wait for the annoying thing to pop up, which it will do in a second. There you go, wherever it is. No, it's telling me it's uh, there somewhere, but I can't see it. But anyway, right, let's fire up a. Uh, there it is. Taking a bit of time coming through. <laughs> Cannot establish connection with the update server. No matter what I've tried, can't get rid of it. But just click OK and uh, carry on. So now when we fire up uh, Tomb Raider again, as you can see, we've got a nice green clock with it. all the statistics being shown. There's a slight shadow there, so obviously you can't see that at the present because it's on a black. And happy days. That's it, all you display there. You change all these names to anything you want, of course. Right, okay. So uh, I'll give you a quick demonstration now as well how to use all these uh, bits here. You've got a uh, core voltage. If you want to change the core voltage, I'm not fussed about that. But if you want to, click on uh, the properties. Click on... Uh, unlock voltage control, unlock voltage monitor etc. Tick these boxes, click OK, restart the app and off you go. With my fan I always have a one-to-one -one fan profile going so 30 is 30, 50 is 50, 80 is 80 so that always goes up nicely there and if it gets too hot I have it quickly sharply going up so uh, I don't want to mess about there but never seen that so not a problem. So one-to-one -one fan profile all your monitoring which I explained earlier to get all on the each line individually change all of these bits uh, to different names and they'll go on different lines you can turn your on-screen display off and on by setting a hotkey I'm not bothered because I always want it on when I'm showing statistics take a screen capture I've set uh, number key uh, minus and you can record but I don't like the recording software so uh, I don't bother with that so okay right that's all the basics there overclocking so we've just explained the core voltage tick the boxes and you can go plus 100 on a 1080 I'm not too sure for a GTX 1070 but GTX 1080 is plus 100 uh, power limit if I'm doing some regular benching I put the two sliders up they're both linked you can unlink them so you can have one down there and one over there, I can get hold of it, yep, there we go, but I'll keep them linked because it just saves me messing about. So you've got your power limit at 108% for me because uh, I've got a custom card, custom uh, Gigabyte G1 Gaming, temp limit of 92 degrees centigrade, your core clock, let's uh, put a little bit there, let's go for 75, and your memory clock, let's go for plus 400. There we go, they're set. Click the tick to apply the settings. Now remember I've got my fan monitoring as a one-to-one -one fan profile. We'll run through the quick bench of uh, Tomb Raider and we can see how that all works. Okay, use my base clock, 1696. That'll boost up once uh, things kick in. There we go, 2038, 2025. Let's start the benchmark have a little run through that and that's your basic overclocking the way I do it is I go big if it crashes I drop 50 if it crashes I drop 50 if it's stable I go up 20 if it crashes I drop 20 that's on the core and memory I go plus 400 if I see artifacts or anything I drop 100 if I still see artifacts I drop another 100 if I don't I go plus 100 if I start seeing artifacts things like that I go back so uh, that's my basic uh, guide to overclocking very quick very simple uh, I run heaven uh, the heaven benchmark I just let it run a loop of three times as well and then go and play some games if it crashes in game drop 20 off your core if you get artifacts in game drop 100 off your memory that's it's that simple there's no messing about 
you're looking for a stable overclock, nobody wants to be playing a game and crashing out, so run your heaven bench, go and play some games and see how you get on. As you can see, uh, everything's running fine. GPU clock is dropping down, it always drops down for some weird reason. That's just the way it is. It goes up and down, up and down, but that's that. There you go, that's a simple uh, way to use MSI Afterburner overlay statistics and a quick and dirty overclocking guide for GTX 1080 and 1070 and other uh, graphics cards. It doesn't have to be NVIDIA, it could be AMD, etc. Right, thanks for watching and bye for now.